The World Health Organization says the Ebola virus first appeared in 1976. Though the disease has been an epidemic in Africa for decades, this current outbreak has a fatality rate anywhere from 25 to 90 percent and has spread to the U.S. Jeremy Vercota is part of a team working to find a solution. Thanks for being on the show with us today, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks, Avery. Now, to uh, start out, give me kind of a nutshell of, of what your company does, kind of a version of a nutshell. Uh, well, we were founded um, to kind of uh, investigate the properties of IGY antibodies that are produced in geese. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've worked on several different uh, viral uh, diseases, bacterial diseases, even uh, cancer proteins, things like that. Okay, so why North Dakota? I know a lot of these things typically happen on the coast. Well, as you had mentioned, uh, we were uh, founded to uh, work on a therapy for West Nile virus in geese. And um, we were thinking that something was working along those lines, but uh, we needed to prove it out. And the founders of our company came up to North Dakota and just started to talk to uh, Dr. Uh, David Bradley and Dr. Barry Milovitz here at UND. And they designed a large scale experiment and it looked like it was proving out great. And they found some properties of the antibody that would work for a lot of other diseases and in other species. So that's kind of how we ended up here in, at UND and in North Dakota. That's great. So what are some of the viral and bacterial successes that avionics has had? Uh, well, West Nile virus. Uh, we've done some great things with dengue fever. Um, we've done a lot of hemorrhagic fevers. We've even uh, worked on some different aspects of malaria. Okay. And then uh, in the veterinary field, uh, canine parvovirus, rabies, rotavirus. Uh, coronavirus. So you work with animals and humans, I yes, suppose, finding yep. cures for things. So Ebola is everywhere in the news right now. I yeah. mean, everybody yeah. sees it every day. What is avionics working on in regards to the disease? Uh, well, with Ebola, uh, we've been able to make antibodies directly from DNA. So it's uh, really nice because obviously you can't just send the Ebola virus all over the place for people to yeah. start working on a cure against it. So if you're just working with a portion of the DNA, it, I mean, it, Ex expedi uh, expedites things greatly and um, so that's what we're working on right now. Um, we have DNA ordered, uh, we're going to be ramping up production here and within five or six weeks we should have a, a good idea of what our level of production would be. That's great, that's quick. Yeah. So I know that the government had given you the okay to kind of do some of the testing. I mean is this the only company that's been given this permission to do so? Um, the government uh, we work with several different agencies, and you know, I wouldn't say they gave us the okay to um, to fund us or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just uh, taken it upon ourselves to start start production and uh, give them something to look forward to. That hey, this looks like it'd be a great cure. We should get behind this. Mm -hmm. um, I can't speak to who else they're working with. I'm sure they're you know it's it's a big problem. So I'm sure they're going on all fronts, seeing who's going to get their first type of deal. Yeah. So. Um, why you guys use eggs? Was it goose eggs to yes. to work on things? Is that kind of what you're doing for? I mean, why do you use eggs? I guess. Well, one thing, um, bloodborne antibodies have some problems. It's really hard to get them uh, clean. You know, there are some antibodies uh, like the rabies antibodies are made from horses. Okay. Um, eggs are generally regarded as safe. They're already they're, they're not quite sterile, but I mean they're a lot cleaner than a bloodborne antibody. So yeah. that helps. Um, we can get a lot higher production on antibodies. On, on the eggs and also you're not really hurting the animal you're just collecting eggs mm -hmm. uh, so that's you know from a standpoint of, of uh, animal welfare it's, it's a lot better solution too. Okay so are you using this this technique for the Ebola cure to find? Yep, yep. yep absolutely that's what we do everything we do everything with eggs we have a, a veterinary product that's been in field studies now for about a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on licensing agreements and that is actually going to be commercially available next spring we're hoping and that's all egg derived. Great. Now, how long do these processes usually take? Uh, we can usually ramp up production within five weeks to get testing testing done. Um, to actually have a commercially viable product, there's going to be a couple months uh, to, to build up that, that amount of mass of antibody. Okay. So you're looking at you know, a couple months time to, to get enough. Okay. So h how would you feel if your company cured Ebola? I mean, that would be a pretty big deal. It's all over. So. Yeah. I mean, Honestly, I think it will be all scared. I mean, because it's like a, you know, we're a research company working on a small scale, uh, not a ton of employees. So, I mean, if actually we had the cure, uh, you'd have to get a lot of people involved and it's, there's a lot of uh, issues, but it's, it's fun issues to have, I guess. Yeah. So how confident are you that avionics will find a cure for this? I'm very confident. Uh, we've worked with a very close cousin called Marburg. Um, it has a lot of the same properties and we've actually made antibodies uh, in very good quantities to Marburg 
and I don't really see any reason why a bullet would be any different. Okay, so what's kind of the next process, the step in the process, I suppose, after you find a cure for something? You know, if you were to find a cure for Ebola, then what would you do from there? Yeah, if our, I'm very confident in the, the ability for the antibody to bind to Ebola, so it's a matter of what level of production we get, and um, if we can get those production levels, it's going to the FDA. The FDA would be the regulatory approval, so they would give us kind of a, a blueprint on how to go forward with uh, the government. Okay, so, so is that kind of difficult to get at then? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's expense in preparing all the documents. Uh, you have to have the right type of expertise. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely it's a challenge going forward. All right, great. Well, I have my fingers crossed. All right, me Thanks too. for being on the show with us today, Jeremy. Thanks.